they seem to have asked about my bio <laughs> instead of having given a presentation or, or a piece of writing on what was going on here. So what we'll do here is look at what interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary education, um, how it will be, uh, can be designed. Um, I have to say this is only one example or one way to do it. And of course, there are many ways to do it. And I'd love to exchange ideas uh, on that uh, with you later on in this session. Um, but before we begin, just a short introduction for the context of this research. So I work uh, for the 40U Center for Engineering Education. Uh, it's a, a, com, um, a collaboration between the four technical universities and it's been in existence since 2014 and will now be integrated into uh, LDE cell uh, as so we'll be working and collaborating together on a, a number of topics. Um, so the aim of the center is also uh, sort of similar as you can imagine. So it's stimulating and co-developing educational innovation, uh, seeking solutions for teachers um, by doing research, supporting educational research units in faculties, disseminate and inspirate, and also creating strategic alliances with international partners and partners within uh, the Netherlands, so also LDE partners. Now, what uh, I'd like to do today is uh, give a presentation on how you might design interdisciplinarity uh, based on the research we have done within the 42 Center for Engineering Education. Uh, and then we have a 15 minute breakout discussion supported by Padlet where you can fill in all kinds of um, yeah, ideas uh, based on what we've discussed. And then we have a brief a plenary roundup where, where we sort of discuss uh, what the findings are. But before we start, I'd, I'd love to uh, also know who you uh, are, who are in the room. So uh, maybe you can very briefly state um, one by one who you are, and whether you're a teacher, educator, policy advisor, researcher, or educational st support staff, uh, and whether you work with interdisciplinary education. So it's easier to exchange on that topic and not also assess how, how much experience is in the room. Uh, so, um, but uh, also before I forget, because um, um, I have a, a very nice co-host here, which is uh, Ali Suleiman. Um, Ali will be supporting me with the chat. Um, and I think Ali, can you say briefly? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hey, hi, my, yeah, my name is Ali Sodemani and I'm a PhD student at LDE Cell. And uh, yeah, I'm the co-host of the session. So uh, if you have any question or if anything's wrong, please let me know. Also, I need to mention that uh, we need to record the session. And um, so the session is recording now. So if you don't like to uh, be in there or <laughs> uh, your name wants to be um, removed or something like that, then just please let me know. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, so Mark, can I ask you also to say briefly something? Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm a visualizer. So I'm visualizing during the <coughs> sessions. And I'm also a teacher at uh, industrial design at uh, Delft Technical University. So I'm mostly listening and uh, drawing uh, the next hour. Okay, thank you, Mark. So Anna, can I invite you? Yes, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Anna Valencia. Uh, I think you can see it in the background. I am working for with uh, TUE Innovation Space. I'm an educational researcher. And I'm also heavily involved in the redesign of uh, the innovation space bachelor and pro project, uh, which is a bachelor, an alternative for the bachelor project, which is inter interdisciplinary. 
Um, so yeah, definitely, I'm really interested to hear. Uh, be great to exchange things. Yeah. So who who's next here? I I can see you, but I I don't see your name. So could you would you mind introducing yourself? That's you. Am I the one? Yes. Oh, you? sorry. Oh, I saw myself, but I didn't know it was uh, me. You. Yeah, were sorry. No, no problem. Uh, my name is Ades. Uh, I'm a policy advisor. I used to be a teacher at the University of Tilburg. Uh, and right now I'm working for the Erasmus Medical Center as a policy advisor. Okay. Uh, regarding uh, the designing an infrastructure uh, to implement uh, research uh, knowledge in education. Okay, thanks. And uh, the next one, sorry, I, I can't see your name. So please, would you move on to, yeah. That's you. I see you fr frowning. <laughs> yes. uh, okay, I think that's me. <laughs> um, my name is uh, Kamakshi Rajgopal. I'm a researcher at uh, KU Leuven in Belgium. Yeah. Uh, I'm also working um, on interdisciplinary research uh, but on well, uh, application of ICT in education with a focus on uh, well social network analysis, but also for forms of AI. Um, and I'm also since last year teaching a course on uh, computer assisted language learning, which is also an interdisciplinary course. So learning quite a lot <laughs> about teaching in this context. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. So uh, I don't know, uh, furthermore, I see all kinds of uh, plates. Uh, so Beth, you, Julia, uh, Gillian, Danielle, are you all there? Or um, would, you, would you mind saying something briefly? Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. here. Maybe it's easier if I have my video on. Um, my name's Beth Yoder, and I work at the University of Colonia, where I lead the team for uh, professionalization and innovation in education. So we are training the teachers as well as supporting them in innovation uh, for the Faculty of Science and Engineering. And I also do teach um, a core course in a program we developed on uh, globalization, um, preparing students for a globalized work world and developing their intercultural competence. So that's one of our pieces of innovation. Thanks. Very nice. So next to you is, yeah, that's that's you with the striped t-shirt. Me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, I'm uh, Julia Kash. I'm a postdoc researcher at Utrecht University, and um, I'm developing together with my colleagues an interdisciplinary course. Uh, on sustainability challenges. So I'm really interested in interdisciplinary learning. I'm very new to the topic, but I guess every one of us is encountering interdisciplinarity in the research and the education. So, um, but yeah, researching interdisciplinary um, education is new to me. So I'm very interested in, uh, yeah. in this uh, talk. Okay, thanks. Gillian? Let me unmute myself. Hi, my name is Julian Saunders. I'm a lecturer at Aerospace Engineering doing research in engineering education as well and um, trying to uh, uh, look at different ways of uh, interdisciplinary, uh, both in research but also in teaching. Uh, I teach research methodologies to engineering students, which in itself is already an interdisciplinary thing, as most engineering students don't know, don't have basic research skills. They tend to have very good design skills, but if you ask them to do proper research, they go, what do you mean? I build a model, that's research, right? Yeah. <laughs> very true. Okay, thanks, Gillian. Um, looking forward to your talk later today. Uh, Danielle. Hello, morning. Uh, good morning. Wait. Hello, morning, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, well, my name is Daniela. I am a former colleague of Renate uh, at the TU Delft. And last year um, I changed to the Erasmus University 
to also work on educational uh, innovations. I'm a project manager there. And um, we have uh, set up a new minor. And in that minor, we also work in an interdisciplinary way. And I'm um, finding uh, inspiration on how we can improve that for next year. So looking forward to it. Great, thanks. Pernian? Uh, hi, I'm Pernian and uh, I'm actually a recent graduate and I'm working as a, a front office staff member at the library uh, at Erasmus University. And I'm just interested in the education field and um, that's why I'm here to learn more. So yeah, that's about okay. me. Thank you. And Rohit, also thank you for introducing yourself in the chat. So quite some experience here, and I'm looking forward to discuss that with you. Um, so now I'll, I'll share my presentation uh, with you all. Um, probably uh, Danielle, you will recognize this uh, slide. <laughs> um, as uh, uh, the future context of students really uh, changes uh, uh, quite a bit or has changed quite a bit since uh, the last uh, century. Uh, uh, problems have become more complex, more digitized, uh, and there's also a lot more specialization. So that means actually that we need to teach uh, students differently uh, in the future. And one of those ways to do that is teaching in an interdisciplinary way, as is in the Horizon 2020. Uh, program, uh, the LERU program rec recommends working in an interdisciplinary way, uh, and many more. So from the, going from the 20th century, uh, century to the 21st century, um, we have, of course, a problem and project-oriented education, and recently uh, challenge-based education was added, but also more from monodisciplinary to interdisciplinary. Um, and uh, one of the things that is often mentioned with interdisciplinarity is also real, real life challenges and complex problems. Now, how should we go about uh, teaching interdisciplinary or what are we even talking about? Um, that's a question we started out in uh, 2014 already uh, at the 3TU Center for Engineering Education at the time, because Wageningen has joined at a later date. And we did a literature uh, review um, on uh, 996 Scopus and Web Science Journal articles, of which 99 were selected uh, finally in for a final review article. Um, this review was basically done on, based on a coding scheme um, and uh, the main research questions is what main issues regarding vision teaching and support have emerged in the field of interdisciplinary engineering education. As you noticed, um, we are from the 40U Center for Engineering Education, so it's all uh, focused on engineering education uh, per se. Um, the points of attention were uh, basically research from, uh, from a more general uh, literature uh, research on what was going on in uh, interdisciplinary education. Uh, and we specifically then looked at, th at these points for engineering education. So what is the framework? The framework is probably to some of you familiar. Um, it includes uh, the vision, the idea that if you have a vision on interdisciplinary education, that will affect heavily uh, your way, the way how you design your education. Um, but it also will affect the way you make policies to actually support this uh, interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary education. Um, also, your vision is likely to influence the, the educational ped pedagogy and the assessment, as, as well as how you prepare your teachers, uh, what type of learning goals are central, and how you sort of uh, face uh, the, the interdisciplinary education. 
finally, of course, the, the facilitation tools play an important role. Um, and uh, especially in these COVID times, these, uh, there's more and more also interaction uh, with uh, an artifacts, the learning artifacts, uh, which moderate the interdisciplinary interaction. Um, now, what did we find in this, in this uh, study, in this, these 99 art articles about engineering education on interdisciplinarity? Now, we found that the, the visions uh, with respect to interdisciplinarity uh, is really focused that students should become more aware of the real world, that they should become socially, socially responsible in their engineering, but also that they should have an entrepreneurial mindset um, be aware of each other's shortcomings, uh, learn professional skills, or have higher order cognitive or soft skills learning. And that they should learn to address complex problems. Now, um, mind you, um, I'm listing here uh, what's mentioned in these articles. And what can be really noted is that these things are mentioned, entrepreneurial mindsets and awareness of shortcomings of one's disciplines, but that they're not very much defined. So we don't really know what they're actually learning in these environments. Um, this is really a difficult issue because um, how, if you want to design interdisciplinary education, how do you do that if you do not know what is going to happen exactly um, in, when, when you are in this course? So that also uh, uh, bears a bit on the teaching uh, aspects, uh, which is the most uh, obvious uh, in the educational uh, department or the educational pedagogy. So some people think that broad interdisciplinarity uh, is the way to go and that you should work together with the social sciences and the engineering sciences. Um, and that's, that's okay that you have more shallow level of knowledge and understanding. But there are also people who say, no, you can't do interdisciplinarity if you don't have a fundamental uh, capacity or knowledge base in a specific discipline. And once you know that, then you can bridge uh, to another discipline. Um, and again, other people say, no, uh, interdisciplinarity is a way of systemically and iteratively doing design cycles um, and between disciplinary learning and learning input from other disciplines. So there's no consensus about what is exactly needed also for interdisciplinary teaching and learning in terms of knowledge, the knowledge base um, in, in the class. Um, then of course, there's also the siloed ways uh, the institution is organized. There's uh, not always enough support at the policy level. Um, and also there is very little teacher training at the moment on how to tackle interdisciplinarity. Um, so relating or, or coming from this, this study, actually we find that there are very few unifying principles and that there are various points of view and theories to actually uh, discuss or um, address interdisciplinarity in, in, in interdisciplinary education. Um, but what we see basically um, is that, that maybe we should look at it in a different way. So that's um, a next study um, because from this literature study, we've also done uh, six case studies at each institution. Uh, added later on by two questions at Wageningen University. And there we sort of more looked at the fact that um, what Eric Mazur already pointed out a very long time ago, that we've been teaching our students with fixed learning outcomes. So we sort of know what the learning outcome should be and we assess students on that. Uh, we have certain uh, tools and, and methodologies to how they should get to that learning out outcome. And also often the problem that they address is fixed. 
Now, of course, the, the world has changed. So um, he has advocated that we should move to more open learning outcomes, which is actually very much happening these days. Um, that we offer our students a methodology, uh, methodologies as a toolbox from which they can choose to arrive to a certain learning outcome. And also have, um, have them uh, make their problem definitions themselves. Uh, maybe less so in the first year, but more so in the later years. Um, another uh, insight we got is that in interdisciplinary research approaches, it's it's much more um, that people are 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 much um, more aware of how they should actually tackle an interdisciplinary research problem. So we thought, well, now what if what can we actually learn from interdisciplinary research? Um, and how can we actually uh, use that to, to, make, uh, to design education, interdisciplinary education? Now we've been uh, say, I've been saying interdisciplinarity quite a lot, but um, what are we actually talking about in, in this piece of uh, study? So we chose the definition here of interdisciplinary learning, the act of integrating theory, methods, approaches of different disciplines to realize a more versatile and possibly better solution for society or on the innovative edge of disciplinary boundaries. Um, sorry. Um, so, um, what we actually also want to point out Oh, sorry about that. Is that um, this integration is a crucial part of interdisciplinarity, um, but you have several levels of disciplinarity. So you have monodisciplinarity where you have one paradigm in, in which you address the problem solving. Um, but then you have also the multidisciplinary where you actually address a problem from um, discipline a or discipline B, um, and they exist beside each other. So they are known to each other, but they might not give an integrated solution. Now in interdisciplinarity, it's usually the case that you actually integrate methods, research, um, research methods or uh, theory or, or solutions in some sort of uh, cross-disciplinary uh, yeah, way. So it's not the solution is not uh, no longer based on one paradigm or one insight, and then you have transdisciplinarity. And transdisciplinarity is a, a bit complicated because you involve external parties or external uh, members, uh, stakeholders uh, from industry or from society, and um, this this information is actually integrated in the solution. But this can be done by using extra uh, uh, disciplinary paradigms, but it can also be done within one paradigm. Now, uh, the other thing that we saw was that um, uh, if, you, if you look at the research, interdisciplinary research problem, problems are said to originate from the real world. They are driven by complexity. Um, but you also have more fundamental uh, problems, which are problems between disciplines, and they cannot be solved in one discipline only. So there's a, a need for bridging to another discipline to find uh, more appropriate solutions. Or these are problems which are, are in urgent need of a solution, which is not yet known. So they comprise actually the, the previous three. Um, now, uh, the, the idea of addressing these um, problems can also be viewed from the content perspective. So how do you solve a, a interdisciplinary problem and how does that transfer to designing education? Now, of course, in research, you have uh, deductive uh, approaches of uh, solving a problem you have inductive approaches, normal design uh, abduction, or design abduction. 
um, it involves actually that you you know different things uh, of the problem you need to solve in a specific content area. So, for example, if it's detective, you know what the what you're going to research and and how you're going to research it. Sorry, this is um, the alarm going off on Monday <laughs> Monday morning. Um, so uh, you actually uh, know what's happening. So we know the sirens go. We, you know, <laughs> the, yeah, <laughs> it's perfect, spot on. So we know the methodology, the siren, and does it work? Yes or no? And we're going to test that. So in inductive learning outcome, you might, for example, think that, that uh, obesity is a is a problem. Um, and you you know that you um, uh, have a diet um, that you want to sort of try uh, try out, but you it can be one diet or another diet, so you have to try several diets uh, uh, where you sort of find out how uh, the diet is working, um, and uh, the, the the outcome is that people should get less obese. Um, so here you're actually trying to find out different hypotheses. Um, in normal, in, in design, yeah, normal uh, abduction, uh, it is the case that you know what the learning outcome is, you know how it's going to be uh, addressed, but you and and um, you actually design an artifact to to realize that. So, for example. Uh, you know that obesity is a problem, so you want to reduce that. Uh, you know it's related to food and you're, you're trying to design a healthy kitchen for schools. Um, now, finally, in the, the design abduction phase, <clears throat> uh, the last one, you actually do not know what you want to do or how you want to get there. So you only know the outcome and from there out, there you're going to design how you're going to get to a certain result. <clears throat> so if you want to design education, you sort of have to find out what you want to address in this education. So what is actually the problem? Um, and how are you going to solve that problem? Are you going to solve that problem by, design, by induction, deduction or abduction? Um, because that also sort of indicates the level of integration you think uh, should be realized. Um, and that also affects the, the way you're going to design your education. Now, let me show you uh, this by an example. We studied, actually, we did actually two case studies, one on urbanism uh, and one on clinical technology. So what we saw this, what in the urbanism master that you particularly have design uh, abduction as a method of solving problems. So there's a high level of integration of different disciplinary knowledge. However, I must say that often the paradigm is only uh, from one discipline, um, but the other disciplines are integrated uh, into that problem solving process. Uh, the problem is framed in according to the desired outcomes. So the idea here is that often you do not know what, a, what the what is and what the how is. It means the students have to design themselves what the problem is, and they also have to find their own solution paths to a certain outcome. Um, contrary to, to that, uh, to urbanism, we have clinical technology where induction and deduction is much more a way to sort of address problems. Here are moderate levels of integration. And the reason is that you need a very in-depth knowledge to be actually to be able to address issues that uh, are a problem. So you have moderate levels of integration because you cannot integrate unless you have access to the full disciplinary knowledge of the, of the two uh, things that are, are integrated. So in this case, that was medical knowledge and technological knowledge. 
Um, so it's really bridging the gap between the two disciplines and adding to fundamental science uh, in healthcare and technology. Um, so it also showed that these led to, uh, to different student uh, characteristics. So you, in urbanism, they wanted open and strong personalities, which are self-aware and, and have good communication skills. Um, they should take initiative and the, all the activities are very iterative. Whereas in the clinical technology situation, students' abilities uh, are really an acquisition of foundational knowledge, uh, a detailed, uh, uh, yeah, being, being uh, very, how do, how do you say, um, dedicated to details and, and analytical, um, but still the teachers formulated the problem because they knew what was relevant in the field uh, and they were the benchmark and the guidance for the students to uh, know or to validate what was being learned and how they could apply that in practice. Um, the assessment in the urbanism situation was much more by multiple stakeholders from different disciplines and in the other situation it was done by disciplinary content experts with little exchange between uh, the different uh, disciplines. So the conclusion is here that, um, you know, depending on how you sort of, from a research perspective, uh, solve the problem, uh, it, it results in uh, the uh, extent to which you uh, integrate, um, yeah, you integrate a certain disciplines or uh, how much in-depth knowledge you need. Um, and it also helps you sort of align how you are going to design your, your interdisciplinary education. So um, I'd like to ask if there are any questions on, on, on this because mm, quite a lot. <laughs> any questions? Renata, I have a, a question. Um, to which extent do you think that, because um, I remember having going to the 4TU workshop on uh, from Amsterdam on, on, on interdisciplinary. Yeah. And I can also remember one of my aerospace colleagues going, yeah, well, that's what we've been doing for years. And uh, to a certain extent, it's true, uh, especially the, the, the more uh, coherent uh, topical uh, uh, engineering degrees, uh, such as maritime engineering, aerospace engineering, there is a level of interdisciplinary, as in within the diff different technical disciplines, they're interdisciplinary, they're not always as interdisciplinary um, when it comes to other uh, the disciplines outside the technical domain. So, uh, and that always leads to the, so it's not relevant because we're already doing it discussion which i always find an excuse to not innovate um yep. so in in in, in terms of, of that um when you want to look towards interdisciplinary and um in designing education how um how would you uh encourage people to think outside that box of but that's is we've already been doing this blah 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 because you want to tell them to look slightly wider and especially in view of uh, uh, the development around AI, it's becoming very relevant. Absolutely. Um, so of, of course uh, you have the broad and, uh, and uh, uh, narrow interdisciplinarity. So I'd say within the engineering domain, we are very prone to looking at the narrow interdisciplinarity unless it's, it's transdisciplinary towards stakeholders and companies. Um, and um, uh, what you see is that um, engineers, so I'm, I hope I'm not offending anybody <laughs> here, um, but uh, that engineers have a tendency to look from their own um, yeah, inductive, deductive, type of reasoning and that they feel that they need a, a basic level or, or foundational level of disciplinary knowledge before you're able to look across. 
Um, but you also hear that um, um, if you start um, being, um, how do you say, embedded in a certain discipline, uh, at a very early er, uh, stage, you are socialized into that discipline and it becomes more and more difficult to look outside your own discipline and not look from your own reference frame to a certain problem. So it will be harder than to solve the problem from a different or a broader perspective. So what I think is really needed to, to make that shift is to start in the first year actually with interdisciplinary education and confronting engineers uh, with uh, other knowledge domains. So maybe not to, to, you know, to, to, to do integration, but at least create awareness that there are different ways of thinking and opening them up to different ways of going about um, working together. Okay, thank you very much. I think what is important uh, a challenge for engineers is at least in the aerospace domain, but I suspect in other domains is also the requirements of certain uh, ac uh, uh, accreditation and, and more important uh, certification bodies. What we find for instance is that certain uh, people are not allowed to work on certain stuff if they don't have a certain course at university because Airbus says no or Boeing says no because that way they can't prove to the certification institutes. And this is, uh, so you're getting to the problem of sacrificing what for how and what. Um, and that is one of the other challenges I think we still need to look at how do we uh, make sure that uh, it goes beyond the uh, educational paradigm but also goes to the wider paradigm in industry yes so absolutely the, the whole system is uh, uh, is actually making the situation as it is um, and you're right so you're you might throw something valuable out to be, make this oh. possible so it's the question the, the question is what but the thing is with valuable is i always say we never deliver um uh, ready-made engineers that are perfect for each and every single uh employer so but for me the, what i mean far more is that the um, you said something very valuable. So people tend to be encased in their own uh, discipline and get immersed and then never reappear. And and, and my point in that is uh, is that I, especially within the field of aerospace, I see uh, the major aerospace employers um, uh, encourage that introvertness by saying if you haven't got these int uh, specialist courses or you haven't got experiences that you are not allowed to work on our airplanes or on our spacecraft and then quote so uh, that's what I meant but you have to break open the entire chain if you want to go there because I also think that is where companies are still losing profit yeah. if I'm really honest in their bottom line because they won't go beyond yeah I'm hopeful, though, because uh, uh, in uh, the joint interdisciplinary project we are also running, yeah. um, they have uh, from uh, an aerospace company they have designed a brick for housing purposes. So, <laughs> yeah, we, I'm not saying it's not going, but if you look at, for instance, especially for subcontractors who work for the Airbuses and Boeing's, such as uh, GK and Aerospace, for instance, in the end. Uh, Sometimes we even have people coming back. I need to have this course, otherwise I can't move on to the next project. And it's never about the bigger picture, but that's because otherwise Airbus won't give them the contract. And so those are some of the, the yeah, so, so that line of thinking also needs to uh, go beyond the, um, that a single course is a sufficient guarantee and that we should far more look at a more interdisciplinary approach in all of it. So that was more my point. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. So I, I'd like to finish uh, with the with the shorter uh, breakout. Um, so maybe you can pick one uh, of your courses, or or maybe just discuss a few of these points, whether you agree or not, uh, and share with me in the Padlet uh, what you think. So um, the Padlet uh, link uh, will be posted in the chat right now. Um,
Uh, Renat, I have one suggestion because uh, we have uh, only 16 minutes to come back to the main room. So maybe we can um, just limit the, uh, the breakout room to 10 minutes. Then yes, can... let's do it to, to 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Then we have a few minutes to discuss it. So the idea is to briefly discuss with each other and how you designed your interdisciplinary course, what your point of departure was in problem definition and how that led to certain levels of integration. So we'll be seeing you then in 10 minutes. So uh, it's 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 actually come out of masters in linguistics and uh, that focus, but uh, for also for the last two years, it's been opened up to these um, new types of masters programs called um, educative master. So, so something which is more oriented towards um, students who want. To um, can something be? Uh, truly be implemented in practice uh, and looking at uh, interdisciplinary research or education for me the first thing that stands out is okay so that means more parties have to work together structurally um, so I'm very interested in uh, the other the other's vision on how would you organize such a thing so if you have a problem and you want to have different uh, fields to look at it, uh, design the whole educational process, uh, the evaluation of it, so the assessment, um, how do you make sure you uh, have all those different parties work together? Um, it, I have to say in, edu in linguistics that that part on education is also already interdisciplinary because you have a lot of work already done on, you know, second language learning and so I mean certain types of groups and those kind of things. Um, but th some things that I struggle with is that the, um, I sometimes think our course is so in depth that many students don't actually grasp how in depth it is <laughs> in because yeah. it's 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 actually and that was maybe a question to you as well what do you do with core with disciplines where which are actually already interdisciplinary and which have a long history of on their own as well um, and you're kind of introducing students to this very interesting scope of, of uh, knowledge but which is in itself interdisciplinary. So they have to get in touch with all of these uh, domains. Yeah, so I, I think uh, um, linguistics, uh, and I happen to be a linguist myself. So oh, okay. <laughs> uh, linguistics is very much um, uh, like the design uh, sciences. Mm -hmm. So they actually take a lot from different disciplines and try to integrate that. But what they do is they, they use one research paradigm mm -hmm. to actually explain what is happening uh, within that particular instance. Yeah. So you could compare it with, with inter or transdisciplinary or abductive mm -hmm. design research uh, cycles. 
um, which make it really uh, that the students should be open uh, to mm -hmm. different disciplines to be able to integrate the other knowledge within their own paradigm. Um, well, I think the the best thing to to design it is to to make to be aware of the the fact that mm -hmm. you know, um, this problem approach is very urgent in being able to solve any linguistic problem yeah yeah so uh, make that visible to the students uh, and and also uh, give them tools in hand on how to integrate um, the other paradigms within their own paradigm yeah to yeah. it's a very good idea yeah so uh, yeah, so any other responses? I saw Daniela, you had a question. Yeah, I thought it was, can you hear me? Or yes, not? yeah. Yeah, I'm having a weird earplugs. You're gone now. <laughs> yeah. um, so I uh, come at a master course and that uh, tricked me in, so of what level if education uh, is interdisciplinary education effective. Mm. Do you recommend yeah. interdisciplinary education for first year students or starting from third year? No, I think I think that's a very good question because um, there are different opinions on this. Um, so on the one hand, like I said before, uh, you have the situation where um, where people have to have a, a basis or a foundational knowledge to be able to, to cross to another discipline and actually know where they stand. But on the other hand, you have the aspect of socialization. So if you're socialized too early on and in only one discipline, then it becomes more hard to look at another, uh, another discipline. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a, a bit of uh, what is your, your goal? Um, uh, is it to, to solve really difficult problems, foundational, um, fundamental scientific problems, then probably you should go for a master's level uh, in disciplinarity um, and really make sure that the people have the basis or the grounding to be able to, you know, to tackle that problem also in collaboration with other people. But if you if the, the uh, question is socialization and, and making them open to other t types of perspectives, then I would start as early as possible. Um, and that would be more easier uh, in, in linguistic disciplines mm -hmm. and design disciplines, as you well know uh, yourself probably, <laughs> um, because you're a designer as well. So. Yeah. So, does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah, then? yeah, really, really great. So you're, so you now have a joint interconnect. Um, yeah, I call it hockey culture. So the culture of having a cell for everything, mm -hmm. right? Because if you were to go to the US, you can take any course you want. You've paid your tuition, so you just register. Uh, 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 and and I hear my uh, foreign colleagues always go, yeah, you've got this so or so over organized. Uh, so, but then again, you come back to the level of that. That's what I meant also with policy support, helping people yeah. to go through this um, uh, so that you as a lecturer don't get stuck on, 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 I, I call it bureaucracy. Yeah. No, absolutely. So. I think it indeed, I think it has to be organized um, across the union university so across programs on the one hand so indeed creating the policies that will allow this type of innovation to happen um, at, at the same time not forgetting that the students are at the center and that uh, uh, you know having clarity about when you set up a, a course or a learning experience like this what why do you do it um, do you want them to uh, deepen their disciplinary knowledge or is it about the interdisciplinary interaction? And what is it that you would like them to learn through that interdisciplinary interaction? Because that immediately that shifts, yeah, that shifts the perspective and the design of the course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and, and also, I think it's important that you have the right students. What I've always noticed that in Delft, they tend to ask the stu students. And what I see is I see the white 
uh, students who were a member of the student association have been in the board. I rarely see international students. Uh, you're lucky if there's one uh, a European student in there, let alone that we have a, uh, uh, that it's a representative presentation and that it's also taken into account that the students that uh, have a, a distance to these sort of activities are also included. I'm specifically talking with students with, with disabilities or and, and stuff like that. They tend to not go there or they're worried they're not welcome or they are not welcome because it's, oh no, we can't do that because it's experimental. Well, no, we should be far more inclusive in our design. Absolutely. 10 seconds. <laughs> If somebody wants to add some of the things to the Padlet, go ahead. I'm not a Padlet person. I always argue with Padlets. They never do what I want them to do. Renate, you're muted. Yeah, thanks. So what was the main uh, issue shared uh, was in your, I don't, did you manage to do the Padlet or did nobody get around to that? Um, I think the, the problem we struggled with a little bit was because we didn't get the topic sent to us beforehand uh, due to the, the mishap in your description. Um, uh, it was hard to say, like, right? none of us really had designed an interdisciplinary course. We were there to find out about the interdisciplinarity. <laughs> but we okay, did well, discuss... Any discussion is fine. So yeah, so what we here? discussed were the boundary conditions. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, that you would need. And one of the things, and I think you yourself can, can probably testify to that, was that you need a lot of support uh, on a policy level also. The freedom to experiment... Uh, um, the assistance in ad adapting all the uh, 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 the, the, the very uh, program-based uh, uh, board of examiners. I think Anna said something about that, how hard it was to get that. And I remember that that was a thing for, for YIP in Delft as well. Um, it's about uh, 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 also... Uh, but also the, uh, that enough people are involved because otherwise of all the disciplines, because you want to avoid that a person says, well, somebody's on my territory. You didn't ask anybody from our side to be involved. Yeah. So um, I think that's what we also identified to make sure is that if you do something interdisciplinary, that you make sure that the disciplines are visibly represented and that people don't start um, you know, uh, 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 squatting on other people's disciplines uh, yeah. and then say, hey, look, we're, because I've included this discipline now also, because I know this also, they're included. And this is especially think in universities that have multiple, uh, more, many more different fields of science than for instance, just an engineering university. Yeah, so that's very good that you mentioned that. So the support is very important because it's really labor intensive. You should have people who are able to assess what's being done. You should pay attention to the power struggle that's going on. Um, <clears throat> we had a very good question about uh, uh, what, which level you should actually do interdisciplinarity, uh, which would be acceptable. Um, and we also had a very interesting observation if you switch from an engineering uh, perspective to a humanities perspective as a student, that it's very hard to get a job because um, it's it's seen as, for example, as a downgrade to, to go to the humanities. And again, there the power distance plays a really big uh, deal. Yeah, but I have, I have hope there, Renate. I read the book on Bletchley Park and in Bletchley Park, where they did all the uh, breaking of the codes, the yeah. humanities the linguist professors didn't want any of the mathematics people there because what did they know about language and how could they help solve the problem of decoding uh, yeah if you didn't speak german why were you even there so i yeah. think that is probably that i see it as a, a 
Oh, what's it called in English? Uh, it's a moving, uh, it's a it's a motion that goes back and forth, right? So now yeah. the technologies will have to accept that with AI and all the others, we do need the other parts of science. Yeah, I'd love to to, to discuss that further with you because I also see that as a big big issue. Well, I think uh, the enigma. I think actually the enigma. What happened there? Because it's so important to people. Uh, uh, where the linguists did the same to the engineers. I think that might be a really nice way of getting it the message through. But we can talk. You know where to find me. Yes. Great. So uh, um, I would like to thank uh, all the participants for being here and for the interesting discussions. Um, if you have any more questions later on, please feel free to contact me or any ideas to share on the Padlet. Um, and I'm looking forward to see you back at the main, main uh, yeah, breakout, main room.